Hello everyone, I am Abhishek Kumar and I will be presenting my team's paper titled An Automatic Leakage Compensation Technique for Capacitively Coupled Class AB Operational Amplifiers. Operational amplifiers or OPAMs are essential components in electronic circuits. Class AB output states are frequently utilized in multi-stage amplifiers that requires the capability to drive significant loads. By allowing for independent adjustments of the present current and maximum load current requirements, a class AB output stage can enhance the power efficiency and also provides high slew rate. This figure shows a representative schematic of a two-stage amplifier in unity feedback configuration. For simplicity, the compensation capacitor is not shown here. It is driving a resistive load RL, which is AC coupled with a capacitor CB. The load current IL depends upon the value of RL. For a smaller load resistance, the output transistors are supposed to drive large load current. Nonetheless, given that the output stage transistors are only required to sink or source current from the load resistance at a given point of time, it is feasible to set the percent current to a very low value as compared to the maximum load current IL max. To do so, the output transistors MP and MN are biased at the edge of their subthreshold regions with proper WIL ratios to sink or source the maximum load current. The gate voltage of the transistor MP is driven by the transconductor T1 and the gate voltage of MN is obtained by a label shifting battery VBAT. Because of this floating battery VBAT, the voltage variation of the node VGP is transferred to node VGN which leads to class AB operation. In literature, several techniques have been reported to realize the floating battery. Figure shows one of the simplest topology where a large capacitor CAB is used to realize the battery. Compared to other topologies, it is power efficient because it operates with very low supply voltage and also it does not use any additional current consuming path. The bias voltage VGN is supplied through a large resistor R infinity. Due to the AC coupling nature of the architecture, Class AV operation for the signal with a minimum frequency omega naught is possible under the condition that omega naught is much much greater than 1 upon R infinity times CAB. For low frequency signals like the ones in audio frequency band, this imposes a critical challenge on the requisite value of R infinity and CAB. In the sub kilohertz frequency range for the capacitor CAB of picofarad order, the required value of R infinity will be in orders of giga ohms. Large drain to source resistance of a MOSFET in sub threshold region can be utilized to realize a pseudo resistor. This kind of approach can be used in many technology which do not suffer from significant leakage due to gate tunneling and through the junction associated with the node BGN. But this scheme becomes unusable in many of the modern processes because of large voltage drop across the resistor R infinity. An alternate biasing scheme is shown here, which eliminates the need of large biasing resistor. In this scheme, we sample the bias voltage Vg and not on the gate to source parasitic capacitance Cp of Mn, but the capacitor cannot hold this voltage for long time as the charge across Cp leaks to zero over time. This charge leakage from the capacitor cannot be stopped, but the charge lost can be compensated by periodically refreshing the voltage across CP. The sampling operation affects the continuous time operation of the amplifier, because the amplifier can't be used when the sampler is turned on. To resolve this issue, two phase process is introduced. In phase 1, we estimate the leakage, and in phase 2, we compensate for it. And during this entire process, the OPM remains available for processing any requisite input. To understand the scheme to estimate the leakage, let us consider a simple RC circuit. Here the resistance RLK models a leakage path which is primarily due to leakage through the switches and the gate tunneling current. Initially, the capacitor was charged to voltage VGN. At time t is equal to 0, switch 5 is opened and the capacitor discharges through the leakage resistance RLK. The voltage V1 across the capacitor C is expressed as VGN times exponential of minus T upon tau, where tau is the time constant of the circuit. Consider a time T, which is much smaller than the time constant tau. The expression for the voltage V1 as a function of time can be approximated as VGN minus VGN times T upon tau. Here two RC circuits are shown in blue and red. In both of these circuits, 
the capacitors are initially charged to the same voltage VGN from the previous discussion if time T1 is much much smaller than the time constant of these RC circuits the exponential decay of the capacitor V1 and V2 can be approximated as linear decay expression for the same is shown here consider a case where C1 is equal to C and C2 is n times smaller than C1 and also the leakage resistance RLK2 is alpha times smaller than the leakage resistance RLK1. Under these conditions, the time constant of the circuit shown in red is smaller than the circuit shown in blue. So the voltage V2 decays faster as compared to voltage V1. After time T1, a voltage difference delta V is created between the voltage V1 and V2 and it is given by the following expression. So because of having different time constants of the two circuits, a voltage variation delta V is created between V1 and V2. The voltage delta V contains the information of the leakage and based on this, we can take the corrective action to restore the lost charge. So the charge leakage from the capacitor C1 is estimated with the help of another capacitor C2 and the voltage delta V has information about this. This voltage is used to replenish the lost charge and to do so, the voltage V1 and V2 are sampled onto the parasitic capacitance Cp plus and Cp minus. They are the capacitance looking into the input terminals of the transconductor. For proper sampling without disturbing the voltage on the capacitors C1 and C2, it is ensured that the parasitic capacitance Cp plus and Cp minus are much much smaller than the capacitors C1 and C2. We call it sampling phase. When P1 goes high, the voltage delta V is sampled onto the input capacitance of the transconductor and this sample voltage is converted into current I which is equal to Gm times delta V. Now consider this incremental current Gm times delta V is pushed into a capacitor C for a time interval of delta T. Increase in voltage due to the applied current is given by Gm delta V times delta T upon C. We call it replenishing phase. By properly setting the circuit parameters, the voltage difference delta V can be utilized to restore the voltage decay due to the charge leakage. If you revisit this circuit, the voltage V1 and V2 at time T1 is given by the expression shown in these boxes. Here the encircled part of the expression shows a decrease in voltage due to charge leakage. To replenish the lost charge due to leakage, we must have to inject the incremental current in the capacitors such that voltage decrease due to charge leakage should be equal to increase in voltage during replenishing phase. Condition to replenish the charge lost due to leakage from capacitor C1 is shown here. Left side of the equation is for the decrease in voltage across C1 due to charge leakage and the right side of the expression shows the increase in voltage across capacitor C1 during the replenishing phase. Equation is similar for C2 also. Substituting the nominal value of capacitors, leakage resistors and the expression for delta V in the above equation, it will reduce to Gm is equal to C upon delta T times alpha n minus 1. Expression remains same for both the capacitors. The value of Gm depends directly on the capacitance which it is trying to replenish. It is independent of the leakage resistance or the initial value of voltage which needs to be restored. It depends upon the ratio of the leakage resistance which is alpha and the ratio of capacitors which is n. These ratios are well controlled on an integrated circuit. It also depends on delta T which is a designer controllable parameter. Now let us see how these conditions can be utilized to design an architecture which can automatically compensate for the leakage charge. We have started with two RC circuits having different time constants and same initial voltage VGN. Because of difference in time constant, voltage across the capacitor decreases at different rate, which creates a voltage difference delta V between them. When P1 goes high, this voltage is sampled onto the input parasitic capacitance of the transconductors. The lost charge is replenished in phase 2. For a time interval of delta T, the incremental current Gm times delta V is pushed into the capacitors which restores the voltage across the capacitors. Figure in right shows the voltage V1 and V2 with respect to time. Phase P1 and P2 repeats periodically. Delta V is sampled in phase P1 
and the voltage across the capacitor is restored in phase P2. This periodic operation introduces ripples in voltage V1 and V2 which can be decreased by decreasing the time T1. Due to non-overlapping nature of P1 and P2, C1 never sees any low impedance path which makes it suitable for biasing a continuous time amplifier. Let's come back to our sisterless biasing scheme. Now we want to sample and hold the voltage Vg and not onto the parasitic capacitance Cp. Let us see how the previously discussed scheme can be utilized for this. In this figure, the parasitic capacitance associated with the gate terminal of Mn is considered as C1. To estimate the leakage, another dummy transistor Md is used. The capacitance C2 associated with the gate terminal of Md is the parallel combination of CGS and CD. CD is an external capacitor added here. The reason for the same will be explained later. Now this biasing circuit looks similar to the circuit that we discussed earlier. By design, it is ensured that the leakage path from C1 and C2 are nominally identical or scaled. Leakage is predominantly due to connecting switches and the gear tunneling current. Now the circuit to sample the difference voltage and to replenish the lost charge is added here. As MD is scaled such that the leakage resistance associated with it is scaled down by alpha times and also C2 is n times smaller than C1, external capacitor CD is added to ensure that the capacitance C2 is much larger than the parasitic capacitance C in minus so that the voltage is properly sampled from C2 to C in minus. For this simulation, we have assumed the availability of a constant GM circuit. From simulation, total capacitance C1 is approximately 3.75 picofarad and C2 is approximately 1.8 picofarad. So C1 is approximately 2 times larger than C2 which means N is equal to 2 here. As MD and switches associated with C2 is scaled down by 1.5 times, so alpha is 1.5 here. The value of transconductance used in the circuit to replenish the leakage charge is 110 microsiemens. Substituting the values in the equation obtained earlier, the value of delta T turned out to be 17.04 nanosecond. For simulation, we have used delta T is equal to 18 nanoseconds. The plot in right shows the variation in voltage V1. Here the voltage V1 is decaying linearly and after every time T is equal to 10 microseconds, the replenishing phase is switched on and voltage V1 is restored to its initial value of 450 millivolt. As it is refreshed after every 10 microseconds, voltage V1 has a ripple of 9 millivolts. Plot in the right shows the amplifier's response to an arbitrary sinusoidal input of frequency 1 kHz and amplitude 350 mV. Bias voltage VB for this simulation is 550 mV. Biasing voltage V1 has ripples due to P1 and P2. The output signal V0 shows no effect of ripples in voltage V1 when it is close to the bias voltage and a small spike of 0.9 mV is observed at the peak of the waveform. So in this work, the biasing issues of a class AB open are addressed for the technologies that suffers from the significant leakage current. The leakage current introduces a large voltage drop across the biasing resistor, so a noble biasing technique is introduced that gets rid of the biasing resistor. This technique is based on sampling the requisite voltage on a parasitic capacitor and replenishing the charge lost due to leakage using an automatic feedback loop. Note that the automatic feedback loop is self-biased and does not need any external reference to work on. The simulation results validates the efficacy of the proposed technique in a class AV op-amp. Thank you.